Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Which is peace on Yahweh's holy Sabbath day. Welcome to another holy convocation that Yahweh has enjoined unto us here in Stone Mountain, Georgia. Uh, today we're going to go over uh, uh, some things that um, uh, uh, are uh, really common among uh, any people who have been uh, um, uh, held in another uh, uh, people's land for a long time, and that is the captive mindset. Um, there are a whole lot of things that we're going to uh, have to alter to just to be uh, to give Yahweh an opportunity to even have some kind of direction in our lives, because uh, we can read all of these things in this book and and um, uh, go through the 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 various. Uh, growth parts as far as knowing what is written in uh, 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 the scriptures, but then there's this part about uh, open up, opening up our minds and allowing uh, uh, a new mentality to be a part of us as it is written, uh, be renewed uh, in the spirit of your mind, and that takes a little work. It's a little work to renew the spirit of your mind. And uh, if we continue to fight against those things, the captive mindset automatically fights against that because uh, the mindset of a captive is uh, 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 the captive finds um, security in being ruled over by the captor. It's actually a little bit burdensome to be free because being free, you have to make some decisions on your own that captives just don't have to make. Captives just don't have to make decisions. Decisions are made for captives. So that is automatically taken out of, of that person's uh, uh, thought process. So you have a lot of people who cannot make uh, uh, decisions for themselves. They find a real easy home in the military because they make the decisions for them. And having decisions made for you also means that there's no consequences for those actions. If a soldier is told to kill a, a, a village full of people and these are not warriors, they're civilians, but those are his orders, he's protected in his orders. He say, hey man, look, these, these are innocent civilians. Yeah, I know. Do the job. Okay. Send that to me. M make sure I got that in right. He protected. So whatever happens, he doesn't get charged. Whoever gave him that order gets charged. So there's a, there's a certain amount of protection that, that a captive has having somebody over them to make uh, 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 those decisions. Um, but just as our people had to come out of captivity uh, uh, before a great captivity, because uh, the children of Israel have gone through many different stages and many different captivities. Um, this is how you know who the children of Israel truly are. You have a lot of people talking about one captivity uh, dealing with the uh, uh, Exodus. But when we read through Judges, we find that the children of Israel were in constant captivity. But there's a reason for that. Israel was created to be a servant. So you're either going to serve Yahweh or you're going to serve your enemies. One way or another, you are going to be a servant. You just make the decision who it is you're going to serve. Because you're going to serve somebody. You're either going to serve Yahweh, or you're going to serve the heathen, or you're going to serve the, the, the adversary. You're going to do some serving one way or another. And when you serve your flesh, you're serving the adversary. So you're going to serve something. So you have to pick what it is you're going to serve. And being that Israel has made the wrong decisions uh, uh, over and over again, uh, this captive mindset has come upon us, and it is one of the things that uh, actually sometimes is one of the hardest things uh, uh, to uh, uh, fight off. Because you can unlock the door and let somebody out of jail, but if they're still in jail here in their mind, there's a certain way that they're going to still act, even though they have freedom. You know, there's there's this little thing of the electric fence that people train the dogs with and once the dog gets shocked a couple times he not passing that mailbox that's it now 
A whole apocalypse could come. Ain't no power. Dog don't know that. The dog done got shocked every time he walked past that mailbox. All other dogs run free and they just going from place to place and they wonder, hey bro, why won't you come past that mailbox? No nah, man, I'm I'm y'all gonna get shocked that but ain't no power. The other dog, bro. Bro, you see any light, Ryan? Come on, man, come cross. No, man, I ain't gonna do it. Why? Because he has already been broken here. He's not going to pass that part. That captive mindset is still there. And those are the things that, that, that hinder us uh, from growth. But brother, would you uh, read the oracles and entreat the angel that stands at the door to come in and suffer with us and us with him that we may make this a holy convocation by the angel's presence. First Peter chapter 4 verses 7 through 11. But the end of all things is at hand. Be you therefore sober and watch unto prayer. And above all things have fervent love among yourselves, for love shall cover the multitude of sins. Use hospitality one to another without grudging. As every man has received the gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of Elohim. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of Elohim. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which Elohim gives, that Elohim in all things may be glorified through Yahshua the Mashiach, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Ephesians chapter 4 verses 29 through chapter 5 and verse 4. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of Elohim, whereby you are sealed until the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be you kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiven one another, even as Elohim for Yahshua's sake has forgiven you. Be you therefore followers of Elohim, as their children, and walk in love, as the Messiah also have loved us, and has given himself for us an offering and sacrifice to Elohim for a sweet-smelling savor. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as become saints. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather given of thanks. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verses 1 and 2. Keep your foot when you go to the house of Elohim, and be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools, for they consider not that they do evil. Be not rash with your mouth, and let not your heart be hasty to utter anything before Elohim, for Elohim is in heaven, and you upon earth, therefore let your words be few. Exodus chapter 23 verses 20 and 21 Behold, I send an angel before you, to keep you in the way and to bring you into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him, and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions. And this is what caused the children of Israel the most uh, uh, problems. Uh, not being able to see the angel that uh, uh, leads us into the way. For any uh, war, anything that we encounter as the children of Israel, these things are led by the angel of Yahweh. And the angel of Yahweh can't be in the midst of uh, our, our spiritual uncleanness. So when we decide to walk contrary to the things that Yahweh has given us, it causes that angel to step aside from us and whatever battle we in, we ain't going to win. So a lot of times we go to, to, to doing certain things and the, 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 the fall uh, that we encounter is all on us. Yahweh hasn't not uh, uh, done the things that he was supposed to do. But the children of Israel didn't continue to walk in a way that caused the angel to be able to stay uh, amongst us. Go ahead. For my name is in him. Revelations chapter 3 verses 20 through 22. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. To him that overcomes will I grant to sit with me in my throne even as I have also over, overcame and sat down with my Father in his throne. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. All right, uh, we're going to begin today's sermon in Exodus chapter 1, 
And uh, let's start that at verse 1, and we're going to read that through verse 16. Exodus chapter 1, and uh, chapter 1 and verse 1 through verse uh, 16. Exodus chapter 1 and verse 1. Now these are the names of the children of Israel, which came into Egypt. Every man and his household came with Yaakov, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and Yehuda, Issachar, Zebulon, and Benjamin, Dan, Amnatheli, Gad, and Asher. And all the souls that came out of the loins of Yaakov were 70 souls. For Yosef was in Egypt already. Right. So they went into uh, Egypt, but they were not captives uh, going in. They went in on their own. Go ahead. <clears throat> and Yosef died, and all his brethren, and all that generation. And the children of Israel were fruitful, and increased abundantly, and multiplied, and waxed exceeding mighty. And the land was filled with them. Now there arose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not Yosef. And he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Which is why we suffer problems here. Um, uh, this book explains a whole lot of things. The, the, the uh, problem with the Egyptians is they said these people keep multiplying. There's too many of these people. We're going to have some problems. So then they are then going to uh, 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 get a, a, a system of population control, which is what we go through. There's a reason why we get locked up more than everybody else. See, this is a form of population control and making sure that those people remain a so-called minority. Go ahead. Verse 10. Come on, let us deal wisely with them. At least they multiply and it come to pass that when there falleth out any war, they join also onto our enemies. And if you think America is not this paranoid, all you have to do is go back to the last World War where they locked up the, the, the Orientals because they were worried that the Orientals would, 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 would jump in and end the war against America. So they threw those people in concentration camp. That's why you got nail salons in every part of your neighborhood because they paid them for what they did to them. Go ahead. Fight against us and so get them up out of the land. Therefore, they did set over them taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens, and they built for Pharaoh treasure cities, Python and Ramses. Therefore, they did set over them taskmasters. So uh, it is the reason why the hardest jobs you find, we're the ones that's doing them. See, the whole object, uh, 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 the objective is to work us to the point where we can't uh, 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 focus on other things. So if you work so much that you come home and you tired, you, you're not going to grab hold to other causes. I remember when I was little, I wanted to, to, to go and, and, and do some other things. My mom used to tell me, whatever it is you're trying to get me to do, you need to tell me before I get home and sit down. Once you sit down, that was it. So she like, look here. Now you tell me on the way to the house, I stop. I get whatever that is. But once I sit down, my day over with. That's how hard they don't work to her. She wasn't getting back up. See, you put a heavy taskmaster over them, they won't be taking up other causes. See, you see the, 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 the hippie movement, the hippies was always out there marching and whatever. The hippies had money. They just look crazy to y'all. But they had money to just be out there floating from place to place. You can't float from place to place when your when your rent do. You don't get to float from place to place. You got to float back to that job. Go ahead. Verse 12, Exodus chapter 1 and verse 12. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. And they were grieved because of the children of Israel. So the first thing, they, the, 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 the heavy task was put on them for a reason, but it didn't fulfill what they thought it was going to do. Then they went. More aggressively. Go ahead. And the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with rigor. And they made their lives bitter with hard bondage, in mortar and in brick, and in all manner of service in the field. 
all their service wherein they made them serve was with rigor. Right. These were things that we used to do. Now, now the Mexicans do this stuff here. Yeah? Now they're the ones that's doing the the, the house building and uh, uh, things of that nature. Well, uh, uh, they replaced us here in in this because they found other industries. It's more profitable to lock us up and then lease us out to uh, other industries, the private uh, prison systems, uh, where you end up working for a company that won't hire you out here. You send a, 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 a application to Keebler, and they be like, man, I ain't going to hire you. Well, I'm going to hire you and pay you $15 an hour for, and I'm going to wait to one of y'all go to jail and get you for 75 cent an hour. The new sweatshops is in the prison. The prison has gone to certain towns and the meals in the town shut down. Why? Because all the work in the prison. Go ahead. Verse 15. And the king of Egypt spake to the Hebrew midwives, of the which the name of one was Shifra and the name of the other Pua. And he said, When you do the office of a midwife to the Hebrew women and see them upon the stools, if it be a son, then you shall kill him. But if it be a daughter, and she shall live. Right. So uh, the women are absorbed into the culture. You kill off the males because uh, the male carries the seed. The child will be whatever the father is. So if you kill off the seed, then you can absorb the women into the culture. There's a reason why things are being done the way that they are being done today. It is the very same situation. Nothing has changed. They just changed how uh, uh, they did it. Um, one of the, uh, uh, somebody put something on Facebook the other day about, um, um, it was, uh, uh, I can't think of the brother's name, but the guy's from New Orleans. Um, he was uh, one of the people that were uh, um, uh, Lou. little, uh, what was he in the, the documentary about when the levees broke? He was on a television program with um, some um, Gentiles, and they were, uh, I guess they must have said in a condescending tone about the black-on-black -black crime. And he said, you know, we, we, we learn crime, you know, from the best. We learn crime from, from Caucasians. So, you know, it, it, it was Caucasians that hung people out in the open and, and, and let them dangle for us to watch. It was the Caucasians that uh, uh, pretended like they were uh, 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 giving us medicine, uh, conducting experiments, letting us die from syphilis just to see how we die. It was the Caucasians that gave the Indians smallpox blankets and let them die just to watch and see how they die. So when we talk about black-on-black uh, uh, -black crime, and, and us, you know, doing crime in our neighborhood, do understand that we learned it from the best. So, but none of those things are, are discussed. We keep talking about terrorism as if it just started when it happened to other people on the other side of town. But we have always been terrorized here. But there's a reason uh, for that. Let's jump to uh, chapter 2 and verse 11. Exodus chapter 2 and verse 11. And it came to pass in those days when Moshe was grown, that he went out unto his brethren and looked on their burdens. And he spied an Egyptian smiting in Hebrew, one of his brethren. Now, understanding that, that there's a, 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 a thing here, knowing that he's grown up with some privilege being in Pharaoh's house, but at the same time he understands that he's a Hebrew. And he's watching his people get mistreated. See, this, this is a weight and a vexation to see that these people are getting mistreated. He's not being mistreated like that because of who he is. How he has come up. Go ahead. And he looked this way and that way. And when he saw that there was no man, he slew the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. And, and, and let this be a lesson for you. There's always somebody watching. We swear we be doing something in the cloak of darkness. Let me tell you something. It don't get dark enough for Yahweh not to see anyway. So I don't care how late you waiting, uh, thinking ain't nobody going to see nothing. See, Yahweh says all things that's done in the dark going to come to the light. So you can hide as much as you're going to hide. But Yahweh going to bring it to light. 
It says a hypocrite shall be exposed before the whole congregation. Go ahead. And when he went out the second day, behold, two men of the Hebrews strove together. And he said to him that did the wrong, Wherefore smiteth you your fellow? And he said, Who made you a prince and a judge over us? Right. This, this, this captive mindset. Look, first of all, the captive mindset, we don't respect you, man. We don't respect nobody but the captor. The same thing happened here. We can read in this book and show people you are the children of Israel. They won't listen to us. Let a white man say. Let a white man come and say, By gosh, I think you are the children of Israel. No, oh my goodness, I ain't never heard that before. What about Tim Brothers that told you that? Oh, you just heard it when the white guy said it. Right, interesting. Go ahead. Intendeth you to kill me as you killeth the Egyptian? And Moshe feared and said, Surely this thing is known. Now when Pharaoh heard this thing, he sought to slay Moshe. But Moshe fled from the face of Pharaoh and dwelt in the land of Midian. And he sat down by a white well. Now, a lot of times we encounter problems and, you know, we don't understand that there's a purpose for the problem. There, there's a reason bef uh, uh, for this altercation between uh, 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 Pharaoh and Moshe. This is to push him away from where he is. And we keep trying to avoid every altercation we get in. Some altercations are made for you to get the hell out of around whoever that is you're close to. But we want to get, because it never does occur to us, look, everybody ain't on the same page. There's a whole lot of things, and I've seen people come in the Word. Everybody don't come in the Word for the same reason. And everybody don't come with the same objective. Yahweh got a job for this man, and he's not going to grow and or be prepared for this job if he stay there. He got to go. He's not going to be able to grow right there. Let's jump to uh, chapter 3 and verse 15. Exodus chapter 3. I tell you what, start that in verse 13. Okay. Exodus chapter 3, verse 13. And Moshe said unto Elohim, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The El of your fathers have sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, what is his name? What shall I say unto them? Now, how is this still confusing in 2016? You got people been going to church for 40, 50, 60 years. And you ask them, what is God's name? They're going to give you a whole bunch of crap. How is this confusing? At least they could say, I, yeah, all I know is I am that I am. You don't even hear that come out of their mouth. How is this confusing in 2016? And we got folks that's doctorates. They got PhDs. They got master degrees. Yeah. How is it you don't know his name? See, well, they need to stop calling college higher learning. Because there's something wrong here. Go ahead. And Elohim said unto Moshe, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shall you say unto the children of Israel, I am have sent me on to you. I am. People will turn around and say hallelujah and still don't know what it means. People sing hallelujah. And then right after the song, ask them, so what's God's name? Oh, he has many names. Well, why you didn't say hallelujah many names? <laughs> why you didn't say that? You didn't sing that though, did you? Right. Go ahead. And Elohim said moreover unto Moshe, Thus shall you say unto the children of Israel, Yahweh Elohim of your fathers, the El of Abraham, the El of Isaac, and the El of Jacob have sent me unto you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial unto all generations. Yeah, how was that confusing? This is my name forever. See, but we let vain gain saying lead us to another uh, 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 thing. This is what that captive mindset is. The captive mindset don't want nothing to change. See, Harriet told me, said, I could have freed a whole lot more slaves if I could have convinced them that they were slaves. You mean he don't know you're slave? No, he don't know you're slave. So she can't convince them that they should desire freedom because they think they're already free. They have gotten so used to captivity that they don't want out. 
And if you try to get them out, you are the enemy. That's what the captive mindset does. There's so many variations of this captive mindset. It is absolutely horrible. And the children of Israel need deep therapy. That's why Yahweh got to bring us up out of here. Because it's hard to help people who have that captive. And let me tell you something. The captive mindset is not one of those things of being uneducated. Because some of the most educated people have the most part of the captive mindset. Those are the people that you see that get on TV, but they won't ever say certain things. Or you get them and, and you look and you see, okay, that brother, you know, you know, it's a brother. And then he started talking and absolutely everything about him, he was like, wow, if I wasn't looking at him, I wouldn't even know he was black. The captive mindset leads him to think a certain way. Those are the ones that they want to pick for promotion. Those are the ones that they want to excel. Because he only, he's only black in look. All his thought process leans toward the captor. So that's why it's difficult to, to, to go cash a check in a black bank. And I say black bank, I mean a bank in a black neighborhood. It's not a black bank, okay? Because we don't own none of that money in there. But I tell you what, we watch the money like it's ours. The teller got to see 15 pieces of ID for you to cash a check. This ain't your money, boo. What the problem is? Cash the check. I go in the white neighborhood, go to the bank. They cash my check so fast. I be, wait a minute. Did you look at everything? Are you sure? Well, I mean, you can't, but you can't just so fast. So, is there anything else? Would you like? Well, I'm, I'm, yeah, but I'm confused. <laughs> How you can't just check so fast? And I'm up here. I, everybody got to see the check. Let me see it. 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 People coming out the back. Let me see it. Let me see it. Well, how many people got to look at the check? Same bank, different neighborhood. They cash it before I can turn around and look two times. What's the difference here? The mindset of a captive. Go ahead. You know, bro, if we ever want to take a look at a captive mindset, just look at a horse. Mm -hmm. Somebody had to jump on his back and rode him. His spirit was broken. That's where we stand, that broken spirit. We've been rode so hard that our spirit is broken. And the one thing you got to think about a, a, a horse and how strong a horse is, yet you can direct him with a string. You pull the string, he turns. You pull the string back, he stops. You kick him in the back, he starts running. And all of us together are not as strong as the horse. But once his mind is broken, he's done. They do the same thing to elephants. They, they, they end up being little show things at, 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 at the zoo. And they're directing them with strings. You have to look at how little the thing is that they're pulling on to make them move. Yet this animal has more power. This animal can move this building. But once they get broke here, it doesn't matter about physical strength. And that's the issue that Israel has to uh, 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 come off of. Uh, go ahead, bro. Exodus chapter 3 and verse 16. Go and gather the elders of Israel together and say unto them, Yahweh Elohim of your fathers, the El of Abraham, of Isaac, and Jacob appeared unto me, saying, I have surely visited you and seeing that which is done to you in Egypt. And I have said, I'll bring you up out of the affliction of Egypt onto the land of the Canaanites, and the Hittites, and the Amorites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, onto a land flowing with milk and honey. And they shall hearken to your voice, and you shall come, you and the elders of Israel, onto the king of Egypt, and you shall say unto him, Yahweh Elohim of the Hebrews has, has met with us, and now let us go, we beseech you, three days journey into the wilderness that we may sacrifice to Yahweh our Elohim. Right, now sanctification is given in three, so even the, 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 the separation from the place of affliction has to be this three days journey away from uh, uh, this place. So there's a process to freedom. Freedom just doesn't happen immediately. And what happens is the, the, the captive mindset 
is going to fight against the process because it doesn't happen immediately. The captive mindset fights rigorously against freedom. All the time proclaiming that they want freedom. Go ahead. And I'm sure that the king of Egypt will not let you go. No, not by a mighty hand. And I'll stretch out my hand and smite Egypt with all my wonders, which I will do in the midst thereof. And after that, he will let you go. He already said, it's a process. He's not going to listen to you. But after I do all of these things, then he will let you go. He already said it from the chunk. It's a process. You ain't finna go in now. I know I gave you this little magic stick thing. You know what I'm saying? They're going to turn into a snake and they're going to eat their little snakes. But you still, it, it, it's a process. It's not going to happen right away. Our problem is we don't like process. But the captive mindset don't mind going through the Gentile process. We'll go to school for 22 years. We don't mind their process. We got a problem with y'all. It shows who we respect. See, when it comes down to the captive uh, uh, the captor saying, well, to do this, you need to go to this school and go to that. We'll say, all right, we'll do that. Yahweh say, all right, for you to get in your own land and be free, I need you to do that. I ain't going to be able to do that, Yahweh. I'm not going to be able to do that. Wait a minute, man, just told you to go to school 12 years. You could have learned that yourself in two. Right. Go ahead. Verse 21. And I'll give this people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall come to pass that when you go, you shall not go empty. But every woman shall borrow of her neighbor and of her that sojourneth in her house, jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment. And you shall put them upon your sons and upon your daughters, and you shall spoil the Egyptians. Right. So payment then was given on the way out. We keep trying to get paid here. Yeah, we can do as many things as we want. Ain't no reparations happening for us here. Because all we're going to do is throw all the money away anyway. Let's go to chapter 5. Exodus chapter 5, and let's start that at verse 1. And afterward Moshe and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, Thus said Yahweh Elohim of Israel, Let my people go, that they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. And Pharaoh said, Who is Yahweh? that I should obey his voice to let Israel go. Right. We say the same thing. Who is Yahweh? We don't say it physically. We say it with our actions. Go ahead. I know not Yahweh. Neither will I let Israel go. And they said, The El of the Hebrews hath met with us. Let us go, we pray you, three days journey into the desert and sacrifice unto Yahweh our Elohim, lest he fall upon us with pestilence or with the sword. And the king of Egypt said unto them, Wherefore do you, Moshe and Aaron, let the people from their works get you onto your burdens? And Pharaoh said, Behold, the people of the land now are many, and you make them rest from their burdens. And Pharaoh commanded the same day that the taskmasters of the people and their officers, saying, You shall no more give the people straw to make brick, as hitherfore. Let them go and gather straw for themselves. So now they got extra do this on top of already being worked hard now they don't even get the supplies given to them to do the work they got to go get the supplies themselves go ahead and the tale of the bricks which they did make heretofore you shall lay upon them you shall not diminish aught thereof for they be idle therefore they cry saying let us go and sacrifice to our elohim did you catch that they got too much free time see they idle so Give them more duties. Now, they still need to make the same amount of brick. But don't give them no straw or none of that stuff to make nothing. See? They got too much time on their hand. Go ahead. Let their work be laid upon the men, that they may labor therein, and let them not regard vain words. And the taskmasters of the people went out, and their officers, and they spake to the people, saying, Thus said Pharaoh, I will not give you straw. Go you. Get you straw where you can find it, yet not all of your work shall be diminished. Mm -hmm. So the people were scattered abroad throughout all the land of Egypt to gather stubble instead of straw. And the taskmaster hasted them, saying, 
fulfill your works, your daily task, as when there was straw. And the officers of the children of Israel, which Pharaoh's taskmasters had set over them, were beaten and demanded, Wherefore have you not fulfilled your task in making brick both yesterday and today as heretofore? Right. At make it your problem that these things have not been done. Go ahead. Then the officers of the children of Israel came and cried unto Pharaoh, saying, Wherefore dealeth you thus with your servants? There is no straw given unto your servants. And they say to us, Make brick, and behold, your servants are beaten. But the fault is in your own people. But he said, You are idle, you are idle. Therefore you say, Let us go and do sacrifice to Yahweh. Go therefore now, and work. For there shall no straw be given you, yet shall you deliver the tale of bricks. And the officers of the children of Israel did see that they were in evil case. After it was said, You shall not minish aught from your bricks of your daily, work, of your daily task. And they met Moshe and Aaron, who stood in the way as they came forth from Pharaoh. And they said unto them, Yahweh look upon you and judge, because you have made our savor to be abhorred in the eyes of Pharaoh. Now, they're mad at, they're mad at them now. You're trying to free us. See, the captive mindset don't want to go through the process of becoming free. That's the same thing that happened in this word. Getting baptized is you're entering into this word. But then there's, there's a process that Yahweh starts pulling away certain Bad attributes of our character, but we like them bad attributes because we ain't got used to them. So then we gonna fight against Yahweh and anybody that work for him. Go ahead. And in the eyes of his servants, to put a sword in their hand to slay us. And Moshe returned unto Yahweh and said, Adonai, wherefore, wherefore have you so evil entreated this people? Why is it that you have sent me? For since I came to Pharaoh to speak in your name. He has done evil to this people. Neither have you delivered your people at all. So, the weight falls on the people. Now, there's wavering both ways. It, with the people and with Moshe. Having the weight of this people come upon him. And then they're saying, these are, these are pretty strong words. Uh, 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 Yahweh look upon uh, uh, you and judge. So, they're, they're making him the problem here. See? Because he, he has upset the things that they are accustomed to. They're accustomed to captivity. So, they want their captivity to stay in a way that they are, are, are used to. Let's go to our, our numbers. Uh, no, let's go to Exodus chapter 16. See, what we don't consider is uh, um, Yahweh starts talking about all of these things when uh, I'm going to give you this, this crop and bring you, you know, rain and due season and all of these things. What we have gotten uh, uh, accustomed to is being a servant to someone else. When you talk about a captive mindset, 99% of the people, black people who go to college, Go to college so they can get a job to work for somebody else. No point uh, was it pushed to us to go to college so you can own your own business. See, that's what those first A&T schools were for. They're like agricultural schools so you can go and learn things so that you can still work for somebody else. That's what those black schools were set up for. Guarantee you, the, the, the elite were never sent to school to go and work for somebody else. They were sent to school to be your boss. That's what they went to school for. They told you to go to school. What our parents tell us? Go to school, baby, so you can get a good job. Was that not what they told us? Go to school so you can get a good job. They didn't tell us, go to school so you can own your own business. So it seems a little bit too ambitious. For the captive to own his own business. See? You start saying certain things. Wait a minute. Where you get this dangerous behavior from? This is dangerous. What are you talking about? You want to own your own business? Who do you think you are? 
You think you're bad enough, don't you? The captive mindset don't like that. And they, and they don't know they were just following the things that were given to us. So we were constantly told, go to school so you can get a good job. Not knowing them little corner stores that y'all pass in y'all neighborhood. Hey, them people millionaires. I don't know if y'all know that or not. Take it from somebody who done been in their house. Them little corner stores, y'all see where I'm at? Them people got seven, eight hundred thousand dollar houses. In that little shack that they got on the corner. And we done spent seven to eighty thousand dollars in, in, in going to school. That shack that they sell oranges out of. They got over half a million dollar houses. The dude that owned the junkyard is a millionaire. That same $70,000, you could have bought some wrecked cars. This dude sell all natives, and he's a millionaire. But I, the captive mindset don't believe that you can achieve anything unless you follow their pattern. Go ahead. Exodus chapter 16, verse 1. And they took their journey from Elam, and all the congregation of the children of Israel came on to the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elam and Sinai, on the fifteenth day of the second month after their departing out of the land of Egypt. And the whole congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moshe and Aaron in the wilderness. And the children of Israel said unto them, Would to Elohim we had died by the hand of Yahweh in the land of Egypt. Why you just didn't kill us? We should just be dead. I just rather die because they don't like the process of freedom is heavy for them. So they ready to die in the middle of the process. Nobody ever got strong without lifting any weight. Go ahead. When we sat by the flesh pots and when we did eat bread to the full. For you have brought us forth into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. See, the captive provided food. See, we didn't have to worry about providing our own food because the captor provided that. There's a reason why uh, welfare uh, was created and pushed even more so to us. It was actually helping out white people. There's white, more white people on welfare than black people. But then what was pushed to us was projects. And it was actually that, a project. And the project was, was successful. The project was to see if you can hold back a whole generation of people from actually seeking anything. And it worked. They would give the, 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 the woman a free apartment, but she can't have no man. You can have as many kids as you want. Can't be married, though. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. So she she she. She can have babies by, by every brother on this side of the wall. It don't matter. They keep getting a check every time she get another child. But she can't have no man. Now, at some point, she had to have a man somewhere. She keep having these children. There's a man come from somewhere. She didn't impregnate herself. But they will keep on paying for her as long as she doesn't have a real family. Now, that went on for generation after generation. And they found one constant thing. Welfare mothers had welfare daughters who became welfare mothers who had welfare daughters and it just kept going on and on. The project worked. Go ahead. Verse 4. Then said Yahweh unto Moshe, Behold, I'll rain bread from heaven for you and the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day that I may prove them whether they will walk in my law or no. So in the process of Yahweh getting this captive mindset out of Israel, uh, what he does is slow down the abundance of their food. Yahweh is trying to prove the children of Israel. But we don't like change. See, we, we creatures of habit. Once we get used to something, we don't want change at all. I tell a brother, you want to see some problems? Give a woman flowers on three Tuesdays in a row. That fourth Tuesday, you are the devil if you don't show up with them flowers. You didn't tell her you were going to give her flowers every week. She got used to it. 
You got to be careful what you get people used to. That's why it's so many relationship problems. Everybody put on that nice face when they first get into the relationship. Everybody talk all nicey, wee wee, poo poo. Right? Six months later, hey man, go clean up the car. You know, then they talking to each other all kind of crazy. Right? Y'all got each other used to wee wee and poo poo. Then it turned to pee pee and doo doo. Right? 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 Go ahead. And even the law, once you get into their system of marriage, will back that lifestyle that you created for that person. Right? They will say, did you provide? such and such did you get this person accustomed to living this way yes well that's the way you need to uphold uh uh them in the breakup of this marriage was that did that woman have a, a house with a two-car garage yeah well that what you need to get her a house with a two-car garage because that's what you got her accustomed to see all that we we poo poo right 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 you need to go home and we we poo poo again if that if that's what you did to get it I know you still wee wee poo poo, Eli. I already know you. I already, I already know he got I just did that last day. You know what I'm saying? I know, Eli. I know. I've seen you in the area. I know. Y'all wee wee poo poo constantly. I'm not talking about you, brother. Calm down. Calm down. Go ahead, man. Verse 5. And it shall come to pass that on the sixth day they shall prepare that which they bring in, and it shall be twice as much as they gather daily. And Moshe and Aaron said unto all the children of Israel, At even, then you shall know that Yahweh has brought you out from the land of Egypt. And in the morning, then you shall see the glory of Yahweh, for that he heareth your murmuring is against Yahweh. And what are we that you murmur against us? And Moshe said, This shall be, when Yahweh shall give you in the evening flesh to eat, and in the morning bread to the full. For Yahweh hath heareth your murmuring with, murmurings which you murmur against him. And what are we? Your murmurings are not against us, but against Yahweh. So it's Yahweh that you're murmuring against because we don't understand the process of freedom. So we're murmuring against Yahweh and it's real disrespectful to a Yahweh I Elohim. Who could have left us where we were? See, when you talk about the, the, the captivity, we're talking about this Captivity, this physical captivity. But understand something. When Yahweh brought us out of gross darkness, put whatever that thing is that you had problems with before. Put that in the place of your captivity because that's what he brought you out from. Whoremongering, stealing, theft, drugs, whatever that was. That was your captivity. Now, there's a process to come out of that captivity. And because we don't understand the process, we start murmuring against Yahweh. Not understanding there's certain things that need to happen along your development that Yahweh has to allow to happen to you. I didn't decide to become a priest. There were certain things, and I did the same thing. I was murmuring, oh, Yahweh, why you let these people take my job? Oh, Yahweh, why you let my elder die? And boy, pew, attack started coming at me from left and right. And I'm praying, oh, Yahweh, oh, I'm just a murmur. Oh, Yahweh, whole time. Afterwards, I say, oh, that's why you let such and such happen to me. Because I needed this skill. Oh, that's why you let this. Oh, because I needed to know how to do that. Then everything started to make sense. But that makes sense at the end of the road. See, but before you get to that end of the road, there's a whole lot of murmuring in between it. And we do it. We do it. Every time Yahweh chastises us, we get to murmuring and complaining. Whole time, Yahweh putting us on the path that we're supposed to be on, but because we don't understand the process of freedom, we're murmuring against the freedom giver. Go ahead. Verse 9. Exodus chapter 16 and verse 9. And Moshe spake unto Aaron, Say unto all the congregation of the children of Israel, Come near before Yahweh. For he has heard your murmurings. And it came to pass, as Aaron spake unto the whole congregation of the children of Israel, that they looked toward the wilderness. And, behold, the glory of Yahweh appeared in the cloud. And Yahweh spake unto Moshe, saying, I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel. Speak unto them, saying, At evening you shall eat flesh, and in the morning you shall be filled with bread. And you shall know that I am Yahweh your Elohim. 
And it came to pass that at evening the quails came up and covered the camp. And in the morning the dew lay around about the host. And when the dew that lay was gone up, behold, upon the face of the wilderness were, there lay a small round thing, as small as a hoarfrost on the ground. And when the children of Israel saw it, they said one to another, It is manna, for they knew not what it was. And Moshe said unto them, This is the bread which Yahweh had given you to eat. This is the thing which Yahweh has commanded. Gather of it every man according to his eating, an omer for every man according to the number of your persons. Take you every man for them which are in his tents. And the children of Israel did so and gathered some more and some less. All right, let's go to our uh, numbers, chapter 11. Numbers 11, and let's start with uh, uh, verse 1 through 20. So Yahweh, and a, a, as we read in some other places, we see that Yahweh was, was uh, uh, feeding uh, uh, Israel by a, a certain way and withholding certain things from Israel to see if we would walk in his law or not. Uh, what people don't understand is... Uh, people who are going to be captive, they don't need a governmental system. They just listen to whatever the captor says. You just follow whatever the 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 the, the leader says, and 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 that is what it is. But when you are going to be free and have your land, you must have a system of government. You can't have a government without something to govern you by. So there's a reason why the children of Israel have to have this law. There is a reason why we are learning this now. You can't have a land without anything to govern you by. Well, we just going to go in there and love one another to death and just, oh, let's just hug and let's just be friends. No, at some point we got to figure out, hey, what happened when my lawnmower gets stole? There has to be some kind of system of government there. So, if you don't like the law, there's a reason why you don't like it. Because you want to stay a captive. Captive don't even understand the law. If I told either one of y'all to mention five laws in the American government system, could you do it? Captive is not meant to understand the laws. The laws ain't meant for you to obey them. These laws are meant for you to break them. That's why you don't know what they are. Why? Because when you break them, they give you a fine. These laws are meant to make money. Captives don't understand laws. Captives break laws so they can charge you when you do. Go ahead. Numbers chapter 11 and verse 1. And when the people complain, it displeased Yahweh. And Yahweh heard it, and his anger was kindled, and the fire of Yahweh burnt among them. Right. The fire of Yahweh is burning among them because of their much complaining. See, Yahweh is, is, is trying to purge things out of the children of Israel. But because we don't see what's wrong with us, we don't see that he's pulling certain things out. Before I could even begin this congregation, we started at my house for three years. In my living room. My brother will tell you, he came just to look. He said, oh, this right here, I got to see. <laughs> now, I'm going to tell you why. I grew up my entire life. My house was, was my castle. My thing. You ain't come. I told my brother, first of all, look, you can't bring none of your friends here because I don't like none of them. All right. Now, have your people drop you off down the street. <laughs> so that why he, he said, so wait, let me let me get this straight. You going to let whoever read the Bible come to your house? I said, yeah. He said, oh, this I got to see. He, this I got to see. He said, tell me what you need me to do. I said, well, I need this wall. Work the, I work on whatever you need me to work on. Just show me, get the tools, and I'll do it. He said, because this right here I got to see. 
He said, I ain't never seen that. I was, this was the way I was raised. It was a, 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 a mindset, and mindset things are the hardest things to break. At nine years old, I had the key to the house, and my brother didn't. He's five years older than me. Cause my mom was like, yeah, I got this one right here. Yeah, I guess she got, she got, she got, she got that thing and that good. I was the key holder. I am the key master. <laughs> you shall not enter into here. Oh yeah, bro. So when he tried to skip school, he tried to come back. Hey, bro, let me in. Absolutely not. I am the key master. Yeah. So he was like, you gonna let people that you don't know in your house. I, said, I don't believe it. Yahweh had to change that in me. And it was a process for that to, to, to get there. But I was going through that process before that part. See, there were certain things that I had gone through that was a problem. See? At first, I said, you know what? I want a, I want a, a stay-at-home wife. Then I started arguing when I leave and she being out. Why are you here? Hey, she's a stay-at-home mom. That's what they do. But my mind was still in that mind. So I'm finna leave and you're gonna be in my house? Yeah, that's kinda how that worked. So with my mouth, I said one thing, but my mind said something else. See, this is how the mindset still makes you a prisoner even to that what you want. See, there are things that have happened to people when they were kids. Those things still rule over them. It still has them captive. To this day, that's why they do this, and they do this, and they move a certain way. Why you do that? Something happened to them when they were five. And because black people don't like talking about stuff, we keep it to ourselves and remain captives our whole lives for something that happened to us when we five and we 55. Still moving the same way. One day, we walking down the street and a dog jump out the bushes. 50 years later, you see a person, every time they see some bushes, they walking on the other side of the street. What the hell wrong with you? Well, man, I just eat them bushes, bro. What, what jumped out of the bushes when you was there that got you running for every bush? So you, but see, you got to pull that out of them. You got to pull that. Bro, nah, man, we got to talk about this, bro. Every time we walk down the street, bro, every time you see some shrubs, you on the other side of the street. What scares you about bushes? And until they tell you that, you will constantly not know what is wrong with this individual. Captive mindset. See? They are captive to the things that have happened to them. Brothers go through it. Women go through it. Especially women who were either molested and, and raped. Man, they have some of the biggest issues. Because first of all, they don't want to talk to nobody about it. So all of these things direct their whole life until they pull it out, put it on the table, and deal with it. See, there are various things that we can be captive to. Don't think that I'm just dealing with this system of us being in the daughter of Babylon. See, that captive mindset has us, and it is controlling us. And at some point, we got to decide that we want to be free. And can't nobody make that decision but you. Go ahead. And bro, even with that of talking, because sometimes you do stuff and you don't understand why you do what it is. Mm -hmm. But you go talk to your parents, your grandparents, and they might enlighten you. Because I used to have an issue and one day I said, well, why is it that just this doesn't seem to work out? Talking to my mom, my mom said, oh, when you were young, this, this happened and this took place and that. And I'm like, and she said, yeah, ever since then, you just said to hell with it. I'm not doing that no more. Right. Same thing happened to me. Same thing happened to me. And matter of fact, when my mom was telling, I did the same thing. When I went to ask her about it, she started explaining it to me and I could finish it. But I didn't remember it until she started talking. And I was like, oh, wait a minute. She said, no, 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 no. I can tell you why you got that. One day you came home because some little boy said such and such and you came home crying and she said, it didn't seem normal because you yelled out, I'm going to do this, this, this. 
so my kids won't go through that. That marked the whole rest of my adult life until I went and talked to my mom and said, I can't figure out why I keep doing this. She said, oh, I can explain to you. Mm -hmm. And she did. And when she started talking, I was able to finish the rest of it. She said, oh, now you remember. I said, wow. One incident controlled everything on how I, 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 I ran my life. I was a captive to it. And I couldn't get free until I put it on the table and dealt with it. Go ahead. And consumed them that were in the utmost parts of the camp. Verse 2. And the people cried unto Moshe. And when Moshe prayed unto Yahweh, the fire was quenched. And he called the name of that place Tabera, because the fire of Yahweh burnt among them. And the mixed multitude that was among them fell a lusting. And the children of Israel also wept again and said, Who shall give us flesh to eat? We remember the fish, which we did eat in Egypt freely, the cucumbers and the melons and the leeks and the onions and the garlic. Oh, we ain't good as captives. Now, we weren't free, but we got to eat good. While we was picking them, we ate some of them. <laughs> but now our soul is dried away. There's nothing at all besides this manna before our eyes. Now you're going to give this light bread. We don't want this angel. What, this wonder bread? We don't want that. Go ahead. And the manna was as coriander seed, and the color thereof as the color of delium. And the people went about and gathered it and ground it in mills, or beat it in a mortar, and baked it in pans, and made cakes of it. And the taste of it was as the taste of fresh oil. And when the dew fell upon the camp in the night, the manna fell upon it. Then Moshe heard the people weep throughout their families, every man in the door of his tent, and the anger of Yahweh was kindled greatly. Moshe also was displeased. Right. So now the people are crying. They ain't got, they ain't got tired of light bread. They, man, this angel food. We don't want to eat this. Go ahead. And Moshe said unto Yahweh, Wherefore have you afflicted your servant? And wherefore have I found not favor in your sight, that you laid this burden of all this people upon me? <laughs> have I conceived all this people? Have I begotten them, that you should say unto me, Carry them in your bosom, as a nursing father beareth the suckling child unto the land which, sweareth, which you sweareth unto their fathers? When should I have flesh to give unto all this people? For they weep unto me, saying, Give us flesh, that we may eat. I am not able to bear all this people alone, because it is, it is too heavy for me. And if you deal thus with me, kill me. I say, say, hey, here, here we go. Say, here we go. Say, it ain't but a certain amount of uh, 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 murmuring that go on, and here come, here come the death. Uh, 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 the death to just kill me. I'm ready to end it all. Right. This is what happened. And it wasn't even him that began the murmuring. They was murmuring to him. Now the weight getting on him. Go ahead. And if you deal thus with me, kill me, I pray you, out of hand. If I have found favor in your sight, and let me not see my wretchedness. And Yahweh said unto Moshe, Gather unto me seventy men of the elders of Israel, whom you know to be the elders of the people and officers over them, and bring them unto the tabernacle of the congregation, that they may stand there with you. And I will come down and talk with you there, and I will take of the spirit which is upon you, and will put it upon them, and they shall bear the burden of the people with you, that you bear it not yourself alone. And say you unto the people, Sanctify yourselves against tomorrow, and you shall eat flesh. For you have wept in the ears of Yahweh, saying, Who shall give us flesh to eat? For it was well with us in Egypt. Therefore Yahweh will give you flesh, and you shall eat. Right. Yahweh will give you flesh. Meat is not the same. Meat is just food. So when people, you know, uh, uh, read this in the beginning of the uh, 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 book and they hear meat, meat is food. Flesh is something altogether different. Israel lusted for flesh. Go ahead. You shall not eat one day, nor two days, nor five days, neither ten days, nor twenty days, but even a whole month until it come out of your nostrils. That's what happened when you take Yahweh out. You keep on. Oh, okay. Oh, you want that? That what you want? I tell you what, I'm getting five of them. Right. And I hope it shoot out your nose. Right. That's what happened when 
that stubbornness say, oh, I'm going to get this. I don't care. What, oh, no, I'm going to get this. All right. All right, go ahead. I'm going to get it to you. I'm, I'm going to make sure you get it. Go ahead. And it's going to be a vexation of spirit to you. Go ahead. And it be loathsome unto you because that you have this despised Yahweh which is among you. Right, but we're not going to say with our mouths that we despise Yahweh. Our actions are going to show that we despise Yahweh. Go ahead. And have wept before him, saying, why came we forth out of Egypt? Re questioning now. Now, they really want to return back to captivity. Captivity is sure. See, when, 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 when you got a job, people get accustomed. Hey, I'm going to get a check here two weeks. See, captivity is sure. When you self-employed, hey, you don't know how that work going to come. You might get a lot of work one week and not a lot of work the next week. See, Israel wasn't set to be somebody else's servants. We, we were Yahweh's servants. So, but it just even in the whole thing of getting used to having a regular job, there's certainty in that. That every two weeks you're gonna get a check. Self employed, ain't no certainty you're gonna get a get get, get 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 money in two weeks. And everybody can't deal with uncertainty. They don't have enough faith to deal with uncertainty. They don't have the right mindset. When you know you're gonna get paid every two weeks, you can set your money on fire if you want to. You can have you a bonfire and get you some lighter fluid. You what What you burn that money for? I'm getting some more in two weeks. When you self employed, you be like, hey, hey, man, what y'all doing with that money? <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen in two weeks. I can't be burning up no money. Right. There's a different mindset when you self employed. You don't just set your money on fire. Go ahead. <clears throat> Exodus chapter 11 and verse 31. Numbers. Numbers, pardon me. And verse 31. And there went forth a wind from Yahweh and brought quails from the sea. And let them fall by the camp, as it were a day's journey on this side, and as it were a day's journey on the other side, round about the camp, and as it were two cubits high upon the face of the earth. And the people stood up all that day, and all that night, and all the next day, and they gathered the quails. He that gathered least gathered ten homers, and they spread them all abroad from themselves round about the camp. And while the flesh was yet between their teeth, ere it was chewed, the anger of Yahweh was kindled against the people, and Yahweh smote the people with a very great plague. While the flesh was yet between their teeth, he brought the plague. They didn't even finish eating it. That was my elder used to say, when judgment comes upon Israel, we're going to be somewhere with a chicken bone hanging out our neck, hanging out our mouth. Yeah, they still chewing. And here come the plague. But that's what you asked for. No, that's what you murmured and complained for. Why? Because we couldn't endure the process. And in, the, in, in between the process of Yahweh giving us freedom, now we have gotten angry dealings that Yahweh didn't even mean for us. Understand, these dealings were not set for the children of Israel. Murmuring and complaining got you this. This is not something that he set forth to give unto us. Murmuring bought that. Go ahead. You know, even up to this day, he gave us a little example of children. You say something, they walk up. What would you say? Nothing. Right. And, 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 and it jumped right under your skin. Uh, having them kids is going to talk back every time you tell them to do something. Go ahead. Verse 34. And he called the name of that place Kibroth Hatava. Because there they buried the people that lusted. All right. Let's go to uh, uh, jump to uh, chapter 13 in Numbers. Numbers chapter uh, uh, 13. And let's start that at verse 25. Numbers chapter 13 and verse 25. And they returned from searching of the land after forty days. And they went and came to Moshe and to Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel onto the wilderness of Paran to Kadesh and brought back word onto them and onto all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. And they told him and said, We came onto the land whether you sent us, and surely it flows with milk and honey. 
and this is the fruit of it. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. Now, um, the uh, children of Anak are giants, okay? We're talking about a bunch of Shaquille O'Neal looking people. So they like, uh, look, man, um, them, them dudes have like size 26 shoes on. Okay, all of them. So they, 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 w w without the faith of understanding what Yahweh is doing, automatically the flesh kicks in. This is something that they're accustomed to doing. But do understand now, they've seen by this time the miracles of Yahweh. They've walked through the wall of water. They've done some things. They've seen a cloud and fire follow them and lead them. So understand what, 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 how Yahweh then, after a while, starts holding things against you. See? At a certain point, Yahweh let some things slide. But after a while, it's all right, now you should know better by now. Go ahead. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittites and the Yebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. And Caleb still the people before Moshe and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. Now see, you, you understand, this is one of the brothers that was spared throughout that whole evil uh, uh, generation. He said, let's go up at once. He saw the giants too. He saw all the Shaquille O'Neal looking dudes. Let's go up at once. He believes in the power of Yahweh. Go ahead. But the men that went up with him said, We be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. The Egyptians were stronger than us. But see, the captive mindset is you can only do what is in your physical power to do. The captive mindset don't let you trust on the power of Yahweh. If you can't do it with your own physical hand, you don't think it can be done. Go ahead. They brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof, and all the people that we saw in, in it are men of great stature. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. And all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept that night. Right. So you got the brothers that come back. They tell them, you know, there's giants in there. We look like grasshoppers to these people. Now, the rest of the people now are, are, are murmuring because of what these brothers have, uh, have reported. See, murmuring can be like a bad rash. It'll spread to the other parts of the body. Go ahead. Numbers chapter 14 and verse 2. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moshe and against Aaron. They, they didn't even go. They didn't say nothing. They murmuring because of what somebody else said. So these people went. They saw something. They got scared. They started murmuring. Now all the other people, y'all didn't even go. What y'all murmuring? Well, because we had, cause we, we, we heard that he, uh, we, uh, that's why because. <laughs> Go ahead. And the whole congregation said unto them, What Elohim that we had died in the land of Egypt? There we go again. There we go again. And, uh, we got them uh, uh we got a pity party going with, with the Elohim we just were dead. Now there we go. See all it takes is a little bit. How great a matter a little fire kindleth. One match can burn down a whole forest. Go ahead. Oh what Elohim we had died in this wilderness. And wherefore have Yahweh brought us onto this land to fall by the sword, that our wives and our children should be a prey? Were it not better for us to return into Egypt? Now, now we want to return back to captivity. Same thing happened to people. Oh uh, uh, yeah, get baptized, get chastised one or two times. They ready to go back to being a Christian? Why well, didn't go back to Sunday church? They talking to me so nice. They were so nice to me. They hugged me when I got to the door. Brothers ain't even allowed to hug sisters here. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, man. 
And they said one to another, Let us make a captain, and let us return into Egypt. Then Moshe and Aaron fell on their faces before all the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel. Right. And we appoint us a captain in our heart to return back to captivity. Go ahead. And Yahshua the son of Nun, and Caleb the son of Yephani, which were of them that searched the land, rent their clothes. And they spake unto all the co company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we pass through to search it is an exceeding good land. If Yahweh delight in us, then we will, then He will bring us into this land and give it us, a land which floweth with milk and honey. Only rebel not you against Yahweh, neither fear you the people of the land, for they are bread for us. Their defense is departed from them, and Yahweh is with us. Fear them not. But all the congregation bade stone them with stones. You see that? They trying to convince them and the people picking up some rocks. They say, have faith in Yahweh. I know the process of freedom is not easy. Yahweh is able to do this for us. Give me one of them rocks. What? <laughs> right, right. Go ahead. And the glory of Yahweh appeared in the tabernacle of the congregation before all the children of Israel. And Yahweh said unto Moshe, how long will this people provoke me? But they don't see Yahweh. So they don't see that it's Yahweh they provoking. They see Moshe. They see Aaron. And they think that's who they are provoking. No, 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 no. Moses and Aaron have a job to do. And they stand in Yahweh's stead. This is what gets us in trouble. See, people don't see the angel that, that we invite to come in and sup with us. So they don't see that uh, who you ticking off is the angel of Yahweh, not the man you see. My salvation is not dependent upon anybody in here doing what they're supposed to do. My salvation is dependent upon me telling you. What you do with that is up to you. Yahweh ain't, ain't going to call me. Hey, man, remember them, them, bro them brothers and them sisters you taught? They didn't do such and such. Yeah, but I told them. You know what? You're right. You told them. Go ahead, boy. That's all I got to do. I ain't going to follow you to make sure you don't walk around in the dark with flesh. Like, hey, brother, what you doing over there? That's not my job. That's not my job. You want to take the words of freedom and go back to captivity? Hey, that's your business. Go ahead. And how long will it be ere they believe me for all the signs which I have showed among them? I will smite them with the pestilence and dis inherit them. I will make of you a greater nation and mightier than they. And Moshe said unto Yahweh, Then the Egyptians shall hear it. For, for you brought us up this people in your might from among them. And they will tell it to the inhabitants of this land. For they have heard that Yah you, Yahweh, are among this people. That you, Yahweh, are seen face to face. And that your cloud standeth over them. And that you go before them. By daytime in a pillar of a cloud. And in a pillar of fire by night. Right. All the nations have gotten this, and they didn't have Facebook. Hmm. They weren't instant messaging one another. The fame of Yahweh is spreading. So he said, hey, if you kill them off, think about what it's going to do to your name. That's one of the things that we don't consider. What are you doing to Yahweh's name by the way you carry yourself? What are you doing to his name? When people see that's probably an Israelite, look how they act. Well, you see folk and they get into their isms and schisms and folks start looking. How have Yahweh's name got blasphemed because of how you felt at that particular moment in your flesh? Go ahead. Verse 15. Now, if you shall kill all these people as one man, then the nations which have heard the fame of you will speak, saying, Because Yahweh was not able to bring this people into the land which he swore unto them, therefore he hath slain them in the wilderness. And now, I beseech you, let the power of my Adonai be great, according as you have spoken, saying, Yahweh is long-suffering and of great mercy, forgiven iniquity and transgression, and by no means clearing the guilty visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children onto the third and fourth generation. Mm -hmm. Pardon, I beseech you, the iniquity of this people according unto the greatness of your mercy, 
and as you have forgiven this people from Egypt even until now. From Egypt even until now. And it takes uh, 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 a serious thing to be able to stand in the breach for people who have altogether uh, considered stoning you several times because they didn't like the direction in which Yahweh told you to deal with them in. See, it's, it's one of those things we have to uh, uh, remember what's written in uh, uh, um, uh, the Psalms and the Proverbs. Remember that I've been made to, to bear the reproach of those that hate you. But see, they don't know they hate Yahweh. They just have indignation against the change. These people have gotten so used to captivity that no matter what Yahweh does for them, they're still going to have a problem because they want it to happen right now. They want it to happen the way that they want it, when they want it. They don't like the process. Hey, there's a process uh, uh, with a baby coming into this world. Very few people get to just sit down and push two times and the baby shoot across the room. There's a process. And in the middle of that, if if the woman is not dilated, which means her body got to spray it out to a certain amount so that the baby can pass through. That just don't happen right away. That has to be there. Or that baby not coming through. There's a process to freedom. Go ahead. Numbers chapter 14 and verse 20. And Yahweh said, I have pardoned according to your word, but as truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of Yahweh. Because all those men which have seen my glory and my miracles, which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness, and have tempted me now these ten times, and have not hearkened to my voice. Consider this. Because all of the men which have seen my glory. See, this is what I keep trying to tell people. After a while, Yahweh allows some things. But he says, because they are these men which have seen my glory and my miracles, which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness. You already knew this. You already saw the things that I have done. To then question me after that is exceedingly sinful. Go ahead. Surely they shall not see the land which I swear unto their fathers, neither shall any of them that provoke me see it. But my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit with him, and has followed me fully, him will I bring into the land wherein, wherein to he went, and his seed shall possess it. Now the Am Amalekites and the Canaanites dwelt in the valley. Tomorrow turn you, and get you into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. And Yahweh spake unto Moshe and unto, and unto Aaron, saying, How long shall I bear with this evil congregation which murmur against me? I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel, which they murmur against me. Say unto them, As truly as I live, saith Yahweh, as you have spoken in mine ears, so will I do to you. Your carcasses shall fall in this wilderness, and all that were numbered of you, according to your whole number, from twenty years old and upward, which have murmured against me, doubtless you shall not come into the land concerning which I swear to make you dwell therein, save Caleb the son of Yafani and Yahshua the son of Nun. But your little ones, which you said should be a prey, them will I bring in, and they shall know the land which you have despised. Now, I want you to con consider something. You have to consider certain things. The word tells us to, 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 that, that, that we're going to give an account for every idle word. In their murmuring, the very things that they murmured was their judgment. They complained, saying, oh, you're going to uh, uh, kill our kids. What about our kids? He said, all right. You claim it's about the kids? You claim all of this that, that oh, with to Elohim, we were dead. Okay. You don't ask for it enough, I'm going to give it to you. You're going to die here. And the very kids that you claim you were worried about, them the ones I'm going to bring in and I'm going to leave you out. You have to consider the payment for a, 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 a lie. The payment for a lie is the deepest payment of anything. All other judgments 
are the same, except for the lie. The judgment for a lie is whatever you intended to happen with the lie. Thus, the judgment for a lie changes. If you intended to make somebody else look bad when, uh, with a lie, that's what your judgment is. Yahweh going to cause you to look bad through something else. If your lie end up causing or meant to cause the death of another person, that's what your judgment is supposed to be. So understand, through their whining, they end up telling a lie on Yahweh. And they end up getting just judgment. Go ahead. Verse 32. But as for you, your carcasses, they shall fall in this wilderness. And your children shall wander in the wilderness 40 years and bear your whoredoms until your carcasses be wasted in the wilderness. After the number of the days in which you search the land, even 40 days, each day for a year, shall you bear your iniquities, even 40 years, and you shall know my breach of promise. I, Yahweh, have said, I will surely do it unto all this evil congregation that are gathered together against me. In this wilderness they shall be consumed, and there they shall die. It's hard to convince people that they are gathered against Yahweh. Because they don't see Yahweh. Go ahead. And the men which Moshe sent to search the land, who returned and made all the congregation to murmur against him by bringing up a slander upon the land, even those men that did bring up the evil report upon the land, died by the plague before Yahweh. But Yahshua the son of Nun and Caleb the son of Yafani, which were of the men that went to search the land, lived still. And Moshe told these sayings unto all the children of Israel, and the people murmured, mourned greatly, pardon me. And they rose up early in the morning and got them up into the top of the mountain, saying, Lo, we be here, and we'll go up unto the place which Yahweh hath promised, for we have sinned. And Moshe said, Wherefore now do you transgress the commandment of Yahweh? But it shall not prosper. So now they want to go up and do what they were told to do. But now you have separated yourself from Yahweh. See, now, see, we, we don't understand the process of freedom. And then we don't understand the process of sanctification. You have uh, 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 desanctified yourself with your murmurings. You don't get to just jump back and go and do this thing now. Yahweh is not with you. Now you got to pause and get yourself back together. Go ahead. Go not up, for Yahweh is not among you, that you be not smitten before your enemies. For the Am Amalekites and the Canaanites are there before you, and you shall fall by the sword, because you are turned away from Yahweh, therefore Yahweh will not be with you. Uh -huh. But they presume to go up onto the hilltop. Nevertheless, of the ark, nevertheless, the ark of the covenant of Yahweh and Moshe departed not out of the camp. Then the Am Amalekites came down, and the Canaanites, which dwelt in that hill, and smote them, and discomfited them, even unto Hormah. Right. The man said, don't go up, but it lets you know. The captive mindset doesn't really respect anything but the captor. So as he's telling them, don't go up, Yahweh is not with you. They don't really respect him. So they're going to go up anyway. And they end up getting a whole lot of people killed. Let's go to uh, Numbers chapter 16. And we're going to start that at verse 1. Numbers chapter 16, verse 1. Now Korah, the son of Izhar, the son of Kohath, the son of Levi, and Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, and On, the son of Peleth, sons of Reuben, took men. And they rose up before Moshe with certain of the children of Israel, 250 princes of the assembly, famous in the congregation, men of renown. And some of us, if we feel like it is his men of renown, so they feel justified by the number of people that they've gotten to go against this man. It is amazing to me. After I done seen this dude talk with Yahweh, thunder and lightning, I done seen, you know, the, the, the cloud, the fire, this dude come down glowing. He got to put a cover over his head because he glowing. Me and this dude, we ain't got no problem. I'm not fighting the glowing dude, man. It is amazing to me, but 
those things of the spirit, only the people who have the spirit can see it. The people of the flesh, no matter what they see, they can't process that. So they can't process, hey, this is a servant of Yahweh. You might want to leave him alone. Me and the glowing dude, we're not going to have no argument. Go ahead. Verse 3. And they gathered themselves together against Moshe and against Aaron and said unto them, You take too much upon you, seeing all the congregation are holy. Now, this is the, the, the utmost of corrupt communication. All the congregation are holy. Who are you? We are holy. We are all children of Israel. Okay. Go ahead. Every one of them. And Yahweh is among them. Wherefore then lift you up yourselves above the congregation of Yahweh. Right. They said he did that. Go ahead. And when Moshe heard it, he fell upon his face. And he spake unto Korah and unto all his company, saying, Even tomorrow Yahweh will show who are his and who is holy. See, this is a different level of, of, of the captive mindset. See, they, they, they don't respect who Yahweh has put forth uh, uh, to be their leader. But these same people, they weren't, they weren't the ones that jumped up in Pharaoh's face, though. See, that, that's the thing about the captive mindset. they real particular who face they jump up in. Because they don't respect Yahweh's appointed leader, they ain't no problem jumping up in his face. But when them two went before Pharaoh, you ain't hear about none of them now, did you? They didn't go jump up in front of Pharaoh's face. Right. Go ahead. And will cause him to come near unto him. People do the same thing today. They'll say anything. Let them, let them, when they go to work, they just at night, they sweet as diabetes. They need an insulin shot. They're so sweet when they go to work. Right. Because they respect their captor. Go ahead. Even him whom he hath chosen will he cause to come near unto him. This do. Take you senses, Korah and all his company, and put fire therein, and put incense in them before Yahweh tomorrow. And it shall be that the man whom Yahweh does choose, he shall be holy. You take too much upon you, you sons of Levi. And Moshe said unto Korah, Here, I pray you, you sons of Levi, seemeth it but a small thing unto you, that Elohim of Israel hath separated you from the congregation of Israel, to bring you near to himself to do the service of the tabernacle of Yahweh, and to stand before the congregation to minister unto them? And he has brought you near to him, and all your brethren, the sons of Levi, with you. And you seek the priesthood also? For which cause both you and all your company are gathered together against Yahweh? That's what people don't, don't see. By disrespecting this man and saying that they're going to go on and do their own thing, they are seeking the priesthood. Go ahead. And what is Aaron that you murmur against him? And Moshe sent to call Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, which said, we will not come up. Is it a small thing that you have brought us up out of the land that floweth with milk and honey to kill us in the wilderness, except you make yourself altogether a prince over us? Oh, they, they're making great charges against him. Great charges against him. Go ahead. Moreover, you have not brought us into a land that floweth with milk and honey. Not yet. See? And not understanding that that is because of their own fighting back at what Yahweh is leading them to, to prepare them for freedom. But because they can't admit there's something wrong with them, fault got to be in you. It's amazing even to, to, to like see people in altercation. They can see everything that somebody else did wrong and will not see what they have done. And it is amazing. You just sit there and look. So you don't think that when you throw the squash in their face, it probably is the reason why they slap you? You don't think that you may have provoked that at all? No. Interesting. Go ahead. Or giving us inheritance of fields and vineyards. Will you put out the eyes of these men? We will not come up. We don't respect you. We ain't coming up. Go ahead. And Moshe was very angry. And said unto Yahweh, respect not you there are. Why do you think he said that? They don't respect him and they're showing that they don't respect him. So he tells Yahweh, 
don't respect their offering. Go ahead. I have not taken one ass from them, neither have I hurt one of them. And Moshe said unto Korah, Be you and all your company before Yahweh, you and David, and Aaron tomorrow. And take every man his censer, and put incense in them, and bring you before Yahweh every man his censer, two hundred and fifty censers, you also and Aaron, which of you, his, each of you his censer. And they took every man his censer, and put fire in them, and laid incense thereon, and stood in the door of the tabernacle of the congregation with Moshe and Aaron. And Korah gathered all the congregation against them unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And the glory of Yahweh appeared unto all the congregation. And Yahweh spake unto Moshe and unto Aaron, saying, Separate yourselves from among this congregation, that I may consume them in a moment. And they fell upon their faces, and said, O Elohim, the Elohim of the spirits of all flesh, shall one man sin, and will you be angry with all the congregation? And Yahweh spake unto Moshe, saying, Speak unto the congregation, saying, Get you up from about the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. Right. At some point, you're going to have to separate yourself when people have decided this is the way we're going to go. We ain't going to respect what's set up. We're going to do what we want to do. You're going to have to separate yourself from them. Go ahead. And Moshe rose up and went on to Dathan and Abiram, and the elders of Israel followed him. And he spake unto the congregation, saying, Depart, I pray you, from the tents of these wicked men, and touch nothing of theirs, lest you be consumed in all their sins. So they got up, they got up from the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram on every side. And Dathan and Abiram came out, and stood in the door of their tents, and their wives, and their sons, and their little children. And Moshe said, Hereby you shall know that Yahweh hath sent me to do all these works, for I have not done them of mine own mind. If these men die the common death of all men, or if they be visited after the visitation of all men, then Yahweh has not sent me. But if Yahweh make a new thing, and the earth open her mouth and swallow them up with all that appertain unto them, and they go down quick into the pit, then you shall understand that these men have provoked Yahweh. And it came to pass, as he had made an end of speaking all these words, that the ground clave asunder that was under them, and the earth opened her mouth, and swallowed them up, and their houses, and all the men that appertained unto Korah, and all their goods. They, and all that appertained to them, went down alive into the pit, and the earth closed upon them, and they perished from among the congregation. Right. We, 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 we read stuff like this and say, man, this can't happen. And we can uh, uh, see now that they have these little sinkholes that's opening up all over Florida, Louisiana, some in Georgia, where folks just sitting there. And all of a sudden, wow, it just opened up. There's all kind of water underground. And you don't know what water done washed the soil away. And it seems solid where you're standing. And all of a sudden, it just opened up. Go ahead. Verse 34. And all Israel that were round about them fled at the cry of them. For they said, "Least the earth swallow us up also. Hey, you got to ask them to know when it's time to uh, 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 get on. You see somebody doing something, you know, uh, uh, they just stiff-necked and rebellious. I ain't going to change, Jack. You better learn your will in the two-step. You, you better learn your step. Hey, look here, man. I, I, I don't know. That, that ground may open up wide enough for both of us to fall in. I, I, if I'm going to fall, let me follow my own hole. I ain't trying to fall in your hole. If that hole got your name on it. Hey, man, I hated it. I take care of your family. I'm sorry. But I'm not going in that hole with you. I'm going to step away. Go ahead. And there came out a fire from Yahweh and consumed the 250 men that offered incense. All right, jump to uh, verse 41. Numbers chapter 16 and verse 41. But on the morrow all the congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moshe and against Aaron, saying, You have killed the people of Yahweh. You have killed the people of Yahweh. You did this. So you don't think they got nothing to do with what they did? Good. And it came to pass when the congregation was gathered against Moshe and against Aaron, that they looked toward the tabernacle of the congregation, and behold, the cloud covered it. And the glory of Yahweh appeared. You would think that they would have considered that before they started making accusations against the man. 
But when your flesh is in control of you, you can't think of spiritual things because that captive mindset directs you. Go ahead. And Moshe and Aaron came before the tabernacle of the congregation. And Yahweh spake unto Moshe, saying, Get you up from among this congregation, that I may consume them as in a moment. And they fell upon their faces. And Moshe, and, and Moshe said unto Aaron, Take a censer, and put fire therein from off the altar, and put on incense, and go quickly unto the congregation, and make an atonement for them. For there is anger gone out from Yahweh, the plague is begun. And Aaron took, and Aaron took as Moshe commanded, and ran into the midst of the congregation. And behold, the plague was begun among the people. And he put on incense and made an atonement for the people. Now, do you understand Now, This is all because, you know, some, some men famous and renowned in the congregation decided that they were going to go against Moshe. Yahweh has dealt with those people. Now, they're angry at the dealing of those people who have murmured against Yahweh. See, what happened is people deal with the buddy system. But there ain't no buddy system in salvation. You don't stand there and, 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 and be dealt with according to your own sins. So ain't, no, ain't, ain't nobody system in this. But you, you can see what the little, the little buddy problem is. They mad about something else. They didn't even do it. But this is how they got themselves involved. Good. And he stood between the dead and the living, and the plague was stayed. Now they that died in the plague were 14,700. Beside them that died about the matter of Korah. That's all that should have died was the people that died about the matter of Korah. But because they want to get into it, because they got buddy system. See? So I'm going to die with my buddy. You go ahead and die with your buddy. Go ahead. And Aaron returned unto Moshe onto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and the plague was stayed. All right, let's jump. Uh, uh, go to Numbers chapter 12. See, they got judgment for themselves that wasn't even meant for them. All, most of these problems were not even meant for them. They, they, they got problems on themselves. They are making it harder for themselves and don't see it. Numbers chapter uh, uh, 12, and let's read verses 1 through 15. And Miriam and Aaron spake against Moshe because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married. For he had married an Ethiopian woman. Is that, this man has been led several different times in different areas. Live over here for 40 years. Go over live over here for 40 years. Now go back to the place that you came from for 40 years. Go ahead. And they said, Has Yahweh indeed spoken only by Moshe? Has he not spoken also by us? And Yahweh heard it. Right. What are they doing? Making themselves equal with the servant of Yahweh. Now, they ain't made one sacrifice. They ain't made one change in their life. None of the stuff that this man has gone through. But has Yahweh not spoken by all of us? Right. You have to learn how to hear indignation when it come out. This is, hey, man, you done made yourself a, 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 a prince over us. We all, we, 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 we just the same as you. Okay. Now the man Moshe was very meek above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. And Yahweh spake suddenly unto Moshe and unto Aaron and unto Miriam, Come out you three unto the tabernacle of the congregation. And they three came out. Right. Yahweh heard it. Go ahead. And Yahweh came down in the pillar of the cloud and stood in the door of the tabernacle and called Aaron and Miriam. And they both came forth. And he said, Hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, Yahweh, will make myself known unto him in a vision and will speak unto him in a dream. My servant Moshe is not so, who is faithful in all mine house. This is something that you want to keep in uh, 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 your mind too. Verse 6, uh, if there be a prophet among you, I will make myself known unto him in a vision and will speak to him in a dream. You got them twisted brothers walking around here talking about that anybody who read from this book, you prophesying and then your head uh, uh, don't need to be covered because you, you prophesying with your head covered. You don't get to read and make yourself a prophet. Prophet receive their things in dreams and vision. 
I ain't dreaming this stuff and I didn't envision this stuff. I'm reading it. So you, you, you keep that in case you run into one of them uh, purple people leaders out on the street. Go ahead. <laughs> With him will I speak mouth to mouth, even apparently, and not in dark speeches. And the similitude of Yahweh shall be he behold. Wherefore then were you not afraid to speak against my servant? Why is it that you were not afraid to speak against my servant? How is it that you were not afraid? You, you seen the cloud? You seen the fire? Prophets receive that stuff in dreams and visions. I ain't giving him no dream. I'm going to speak with him face to face. How is it you were not afraid? Go ahead. You know, in certain situations, we bring our own problems along like with Abraham and Lot. Moshe was given this job. He complained, I'm not an eloquent man. Yeah. And then Iran was put into the picture. Right. Right. Verse 9. And the anger of Yahweh was kindled against them, and he departed. And the cloud departed from off the tabernacle, and, behold, Miriam became leprous, white as snow. And Iran looked upon Miriam, and, behold, she was leprous. And Iran said unto Moshe, Alas, my master, I beseech you, lay not the sin upon us, wherein we have done foolishly, and wherein we have sinned. Let her not be as one dead, of whom the flesh is half consumed, when he cometh out of his mother's womb. And Moshe cried unto Yahweh, saying, Heal her now, O Elohim, I beseech you. And Yahweh said unto Moshe, If her father had but spit in her face, should she not be ashamed seven days? Let her be shut out of the camp seven days. And after that, let her be received in again. Right. So Moshe, the same one who was able to stand in the breach for the children of Israel, he said, let her be healed now. Even though uh, 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 she has spoken against me and spoken against you, heal her. Yahweh said no. No. No, she need to suffer something so she understand to stop running her mouth. Go ahead. And Miriam was shut out from the camp seven days, and the people journeyed not till Miriam was brought in again. All right, let's go to uh, Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12, and let's read verses 31 through verse 37 Matthew chapter 12 and verse 31 wherefore I say unto you all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men and whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man it shall be forgiven him but whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost it shall not be forgiven him neither in this world, neither in the world to come. Either make the tree good, and his fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt, and his fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by his fruit. The tree is known by his fruit. In other words, these actions. See, there are a lot of people that seem nice, but you watch their deeds. That's how you judge a man. A lot of people speak really, really nice. Watch their moves, and you find out. Oh, they ain't as nice as they seem. I used to know a brother he seemed he, he was real soft spoken and you know, stuff like that. On the on the appearance, it looked like he was a very peaceful brother. Then I find out and I get called, he over there fighting with his wife. I was like, they think you know the brother punched through a windshield. Could you punch through that with your hand? You know they make rocks. It, you can pick up the rock and throw it through the window. Broke up his hand and everything. The brother seemed like he was very calm, but the fruit didn't match the appearance. It looked one way. That's why I keep telling people, before you get into a relationship, wait a minute for a second. See what kind of fruit come off that tree. They used to tell us when we were old, shake the family tree and see how many nuts fall out of it. Get the family tree and just shake. Oh, whoa, what was that? <laughs> you need to shake that tree. You might feel out. You might figure out. You know what? I don't think I want to be this. This don't look prosperous here. Right? You need to shake that tree. Figure out some things. See what kind of fruit come off of it. Cause do you understand? 
as 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 you procreate, your kids gonna be little versions of you and whatever nuts came off that other tree. Cause you got some nuts on your tree too now. Don't think ain't no nuts in your tree. You might be the biggest nut in your tree. <laughs> Go ahead. Verse 34. Oh, generation of vipers. How can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. But I say unto you, that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. Every idle word. Idle. The definition of idle, inactive, unemployed, lazy, useless, barren, idle, slow. Useless words. And you're going to give an account for every useless thing that has proceeded out of your mouth. Go ahead, brother. Verse 37. For by your words, you shall be justified, and by your words, you shall be condemned. Right. So we might want to be a little bit uh, 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 careful about what those uh, 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 words are. Um, uh, when the, uh, 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 Johannes' father was uh, 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 giving the whole thing about him having a, a kid in his old age, uh, he was the one lighting the incense. So he went in the congregation by himself to sanctify the room and do all of those things. He went in, uh, uh, met with the angel, and the angel told him what was going to happen to him. He turned around and asked the angel a question. Whereby do I know that this shall happen to me? When, 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 when didn't turn out good for him when he asked that question. It wasn't, wasn't good because he questioned the angel of Yahweh. The angel's like, oh, okay, so you won't question me? I tell you what. You ain't going to be able to talk until the child come. That means he couldn't talk the whole time she was pregnant. He walked around with a little table. They say, hey, man, set yourself. Well, uh, well, uh, 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 how you think? Because you want, you, you want a mama? You want a mama? I tell you what. You ain't going to be able to talk until the baby come out. That's when he got his voice back. When they tried to say, well, what's the child name? He wrote the child name on the tablet and showed it to him. Then his voice came back. Right. The angel didn't appreciate the murmuring. Ask me again. Question me again. But that was a man that should have known better. He wasn't just some, like I said, Yahweh give you a minute. But what's, what's happening because we're creatures of habit. We think that Yahweh is going to keep allowing you to do stuff. No, he's not going to keep allowing you to do stuff. At a certain point, he's going to say, enough is enough. You like the incense. How you going to question me? If the brother come in here to light this incense, and he know he in here by himself. And then as he start lighting that incense, and another brother appear right here, you know he ain't come through that door. Then you going to turn on the question him? It's probably not a good thing. So y'all will allow some things in the beginning of your walk. But keep on being stubborn. Keep on being about your flesh. And see what Yahweh do to you. But let us hear the conclusion of this matter. Let's go to Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5 and um, read uh, verse 37. But let your communication be yea, yea, nay, nay, for whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil. Whatsoever is more than these cometh come of evil. I tell people all the time, everything that you say after your no lessens the effect of your no. For people who have children and you tell them something and they say, can I have such a set? Well, no. Um, we gotta go such a set. Guaranteed they finna ask you again. 
Why? Because of all the words that you said after no. Every word you said after no lessen the effect of your no. No is a complete sentence. It, it is the subject. It is the predicate. It is the noun. It is the verb. It is an action verb. Okay? It is a complete sentence. Everything is included in that. Daddy, can I have such and such? No. That's it. I don't have to say anything. Else. Everything that I say after that is a problem for me. There's parts in this book that say, when I'm in the presence of my enemies, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. Understanding that every word that you say is being used against you. That's the same thing these folk tell you when they, when they lock us up. You got the right to remain silent. Okay, tell me what happened. Okay, let me tell you something. All right, now, now, what? See, James came in with the gun, right? I didn't have a gun. Okay, what? I, okay, I had a small gun. Okay, the what? Shut up! <laughs> you have the right to remain silent. Use it. And all that stuff you saying, all that stuff coming back up, and you caught trap. Same thing here. When you stand before Yahshua, all that murmuring you did. And do understand, Yahweh hears inner murmuring. Remember uh, uh, how Esau got his name. She laughed. He said, you're going to have a child. <laughs> Why you laugh? Oh, I, I didn't laugh. No, yeah, but you, damn, so yes, you did yet laugh. Right. So don't think Yahweh can't hear that little inner stuff y'all got going on too. He can hear that. That's why they named the boy Esau. Laughter. So consider those things as we get ready to be uh, 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 put in a place where the children of Israel have to take back our rightful place. The whole earth is waiting on you. The, 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 the earth can't do what it needs to do and even move the way that it's supposed to move and be at peace the way that it's supposed to be at peace because you are not in your rightful place. But you can't get in your rightful place if you are going to keep a captive mindset. You cannot be free with that mind. That's all that we're going to do for today. Remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. Oh, also... Uh, praise Yahweh. We, uh, this is our uh, uh, baptism Sabbath, and we have several candidates uh, for uh, uh, baptism. Uh, and Sister Katie, who have uh, come from Wisconsin to get her baptism. Praise Yahweh. I should ask you to bring me some cheese or something. I think that okay. I officially do not know anybody from Wisconsin. I, 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 but um, we also got uh, uh, um, Brother Dylan is getting his baptism, uh, Sister Derica, and the fruit of my loins, AJ, is getting his baptism. I know, right? People are like, what? You know, praise Yahweh. Praise Yahweh for uh, uh, all of uh, um, these uh, uh, baptism candidates and and this is also letting those brothers know who you know do those things back there in the media department to make sure that that you know the videos are, are the way they need to be um that people are 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 able to see these things and and making the 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 sacrifices to come and and get their things uh, done correctly getting their their baptisms and all of these things uh done um, correctly. Praise Yahweh for that. Uh, that's all that we're going to do for today. Remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.